Gracias a mi hermano Iris for her reading our scripture today in Espanol. Y a mi hermano Max, y Max, y Max, y Max for our song of preparation to help prepare us for our message today. But before we get started, I need to acknowledge that this scripture is most known to many of us as one that is used in weddings or that talks about the feelings of love that people share. I think about the pastors who are as gooey eyed as the bride and groom and their parents as they think about the love that brought these two families together and is creating a new one built on the love just like the, and no, I can't. Why not? I, I just can't. So if you came today thinking that this was going to be a repeat of a wedding sermon on 1 Corinthians 13, then let me burst your bubble right now. So you can be ready. So you can be ready for the hard word that Paul proclaims in these verses and what that means for us today, particularly at this moment in our world's history. Will you pray with me? I surrender all to you, everything I give to you, withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. O oh God of love, speak to me. God of mercy and grace, speak through me. God of justice and power, speak in spite of me. That on this day, in these moments, your will would be done. Amen. You may remember a few weeks back in our series as we were looking at the Holy Spirit during Easter time, we stopped by 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and talked about gifts of the Spirit. In that time, we talked about the struggles and the challenges that the Corinthians were dealing with as they sought to measure themselves against one another, as they were trying to outdo one another in a number of ways, from worldly divisions to the ranking of spiritual gifts. This all was happening in between them, fighting over where people sat, who ate first, and people taking one another to court in between the gatherings of the Corinthian church. After Paul makes many comments about gifts, he closes his talking in what we know as chapter 12 with the words, and I will show you a more excellent way. Into this space of conflict and wondering about how to be faithful Christians, Paul writes the words of 1 Corinthians 13. Into a world and a community where infighting was rampant, where everyone was trying to one-up each other, where people were trying to bring the hate and supremacy-filled social orders of their society into the body of Christ, into the church. Beloved, into that space, Paul shares the words of 1 Corinthians 13. And he begins with if. If. Paul writes, not the Rudyard Kipling poem, but this stirring introduction to the phrase often used in rhetoric in Paul's day and our own, which begins a set of statements building one upon the other. If, Paul says three times, presenting statements on different gifts, as he has previously talked about in this letter. However, he places the phrase, but, mm, but do not have love 
before we get to the much anticipated then. If I can speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but do not love, Paul says, as Molly and Reverend Jenny showed us, that I am just noise. If I have prophetic powers and immense knowledge, if I have faith that can move mountains, an idea that Jesus spoke to us of in the Gospels, but I do not have love, Paul says, I am nothing. If I give away everything that I have, all my material wealth, even my body or my life, but I do not have love, then I gain nothing. Nothing. It's all for naught. Beloved, Paul is here to tell us that love is not just a way, it is the way. It matters not the actions we take, the skill we are proficient in, the knowledge or faith that we possess. What matters is that we, as the followers of Christ, do all that we do in love. To be what you and I were created to be, to be the child of God who reflects God's image within you into the world, you have to love. It's a must. It's the way. But what is love? Paul anticipates this question and proceeds to answer it in the verses following his opening. He briefly starts with what love is. It's patient and it's kind. Then he goes into what I heard as Pauline parent mode saying what love is not. Insert list of poor behaviors that you, the people of the Corinthian church, have been doing. He says, love is not jealousy, it's not boastful, it's not puffed up or behaving disgracefully. It's not seeking your own purposes, becoming irritated, keeping score of wrongdoings, nor is it taking pleasure in unrighteousness. In so doing, he continues to tell us more about what love is. It's humble. It's graceful. It's kind gracious. It's truth-seeking and truth-adoring. If someone or a group of someones are puffing themselves up, telling you how awesome they are, that's not love. If someone cries out with envy at the praise or attention someone else is receiving, or the gifts or things that another has, that's not love. If someone's running around saying it's my way or the highway, keeping a scorecard of every time that someone crosses them or disagrees with them, just waiting for that moment to get even, that's not love. That's self-focused. Love, as Boykin Sanders puts it, is other-oriented, focused on our siblings on others. Love, dear ones, is a verb that is made real not in our words, but in our deeds, in our actions. It is manifest, made real in the actions that we take, the things we do with our lives and the things that we don't do. It's not simply some concept that we're trying to master or fully understand only in our minds. No, it has to be put into action. Perhaps one of the most striking of, to me of these statements as I read through this scripture this time was the one that closes verse 6, where Paul says that love rejoices in the truth. To rejoice in the truth, we have to seek it. We have to be willing to name it. We have to be willing to speak it out and to live it out when it's easy and especially when it's hard. There's no exemption to Paul's statement that love rejoices in the truth, but only when it's convenient. There is, in fact, nothing convenient about anything that Paul has written in this letter and certainly not in this section on love. For love is hard. It takes work, intentional, repeated work, day in and day out. It takes going beyond what is convenient and easy. It takes courage. 
It takes resolve. It takes persistence. In this world in which we find ourselves, while different in many ways than the one in which the Corinthians live, we, like Professor Dumbledore said, must all face the choice between what is right and what is easy. In a world like the one of 1 Corinthians, where your faith could lead to your imprisonment or death, where the world that surrounded you was entirely based on honor and status, where the message of Jesus Christ stood directly at odds with the ways of the world, putting love into actions was work. It was hard. Yet no less for us in our world today, where the name of Christianity is not always tied to a person who's living following the examples of Christ. In our world where the church, the church that preaches and prays to Jesus Christ, and yet at the same time actively seeks to include, exclude people based on their ethnicity, their gender, their racial identity, their gender identity, their sexual orientation, their immigration status or their political affiliation, where the church has and continues to condone or at the very least stay silent at the murder of its citizens who are, last time I checked, innocent until proven guilty, where the church exists in sanctuary after sanctuary built by enslaved and indentured people of color on lands that were forcibly taken from our First Nation siblings and built upon a heritage that has excused for centuries the commodification and subjugation of black and brown bodies while upholding whiteness as an ideal. As if Jesus, the brown-skinned immigrant Jew born to a teenage mother without a room to stay in, as if that Jesus was some white prince like a future king of England. In our world where my saying these things is more likely to have people turn off their live stream and turn away. Don't do it yet, stay with me now. It's more likely to have you wanna walk away than, where, than face the realities of this world. Where my very existence is a threat to some while a cause for worry and concern every time I leave the house for me and for those that love me, and every moment of every day, lest I be confused for the wrong person and shot dead. Dear ones, in this world, love is hard. It is a work that goes way beyond the bubbly emotions this chapter of Corinthians so often makes people think of. But how can we do that? So much seems to stand in our way. The burden seems so difficult. Too much your mind is telling me. Too much your friends are telling you. Too much, I can't do it. The pessimistic voice of limitations is saying inside of you. But that still small voice is saying, yes, you can. Yes, we can. Yes, you will. Yes, we will. For love neither ends nor does it fail. Because, dear friends, God is love. God is love, as 1 John chapter 4 explicitly states it. God's love, God is love as Christ in the incarnation and in his life and his breath demonstrates it. It is God that cannot fail, God that does not end, and the God in us, in whose image we were made, has empowered us to love in transformative ways. For God's love is in you and in me, transforming us right in this moment, whether we want it to or not, in ways beyond what we can perceive or imagine. God's love is the love that shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. God's love is the love that has changed our world again and again. From the promises of God to Adam and Eve, to Noah and Abraham, to the freeing of God's people from Egypt, to the speaking and demonstrating of love in the kingdom of Israel in all its forms, even in the midst of tyranny and oppression. God's love was still speaking and working through the prophets in the kingdom time and in exile 
to Esther as she stood up for her own people, risking her own life to save theirs. God's love was working in John the Baptist as he prepared the way for Christ, in Jesus and his disciples as they shared the message of God's redemptive love in and with the world. God's love worked throughout Holy Week to the cross, to the tomb, and then again on Resurrection Sunday. God's love came at Pentecost, as we remember just a few weeks ago, and made possible Jesus' command to spread the good news to speak the love of God in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. God's love worked in the face of Roman oppression and hatred and murder of early Christians until Christianity became the religion of the Roman Empire. And then God's love worked through the misuse of God's name as Christianity became conflated with empire and earthly power. It worked through slavery in all its forms, and especially as people, including our people, as Methodists, worked against to overcome chattel slavery in this country and others. God's love has continued to transform this world from the theories of supremacy and privilege and exploitation and exclusion to shine light on places where God's love is needed most, to encourage and empower those who are bold and brave enough to go and respond to the call of love. God's call to love is upon each of us, beloved, each and every one of us, from the smallest baby May all the way to the oldest one in us and everyone in between. You, 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 each and every one of you is called to be a part of God's love, and we need you. Dear ones, I need you. Our world needs you to love with all that you have and with all that you can. We need you to love knowing that you will make mistakes and that you can and must grow from these moments and get back up and love again. Love is why you were created. The gifts we have are finite. They will hand, end. But the love of God, which is at work within you and me, is how we participate in the transformation of this world. And right now, we desperately need you and your love to shine in the darkness. We can do it, and we will do it. God has invited us to be a part of what God is doing in this world, and love, dear friends, is the most powerful vehicle that we have to change this world, to be a part of transforming this world into God's kingdom. So let us... Put God's love into action this day for all the world to see. That the world may see God in your life.